In this video, we're going to look at how to take a state transition diagram for a finite state machine and turn it into some digital logic that will implement the finite state machine. So we're assuming that we're already given the state transition diagram. In this particular case, we've got an FSM that has six states, which I've labeled S0 through S5. This FSM has one input I, and it has two outputs, which we'll refer to as Z sub 1 and Z sub 0. So the first step that we typically take when we want to implement an FSM is to create tables that translate the current state into the next state, as well as tables that take the current states and translate it into the output. So we're going to start with the next state table. So here I've already partially filled this in. I've identified that we have six states and one input. So for each of the states, I've provided possibilities with the input being zero and one. And I've chosen, in this case, a binary encoding for each of our states corresponding to the number for the state name. And so the first thing that we want to do is go from our current state to the abstract next state. And so if we start looking at S0, we can see that if the input i is 0, then we're going to stay in S0. And if the input is 1, we're going to S1. From S1, if the input is 0, then we're going back to S0. And if the input is 1, we're going to S2. From S2, if the input is 0, we're going to S3. And if the input is 1, we're staying in S2. From S3, if the input is 0, we're going to S4. And if the input is 1, then we're going back to S1. If we're in S4 and the input is 0, we're going to S5. And if the input is 1, we're going back to S1. And finally, if we're in S5 and the input is 0, we're going back to S0. And if the input is 1, we're going back to S S1. And now we could fill in the state encoding for these. And in this case, since we're using a binary encoding, it's fairly straightforward. So we've got 00 for state S0, 001 for S1, and we can continue this all the way down. So that takes care of our next state table. The other thing that we need to handle is our output table. In this case, we've got a more machine because the outputs are specified within the state, so they don't depend on the inputs. And so here I've just drawn a table that has the different states as well as our two output bits, Z1 and Z sub 0. And so we're going to start with Z sub 0, which is the rightmost bit here. In S0, that value is 0. That's also true in S1. In S2, the value is 1. In S3, it's 0. In S4, it's 1. And finally, in S5, it's 0. And then for Z sub 1, we can see that the only case where it's 1 is in S5. And in all other cases, it's 0. Now that we have our tables, the next step would be to create equations for each of the next state bits along with each of the output bits. I'm not going to show all of them here, but I am going to show one for a next state bit as well as one for an output bit. In this case, we're going to look at the Q2 bit or the next state for Q2. To create an optimal version of this, we'd like to use a K map. So I'm going to draw, we have four inputs, the, two, the three state bits and the one input. So we need a four input K map, and this is going to be for the next value of Q2. And so we're going to start with the case of 0, 0, 0, 0. So we're going from state 0, and we're going to just read down for this Q2 next state. And so here we'll have 0, 0, 0, 0 for the first four rows. For the next four rows, we'll have 0, 0, 1, 0. For the next state, the next set of rows, where we've got 1 and 0 for Q2, we're going to the bottom row of our K-map. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0. And so for the last two states, we're not using them, so we can fill them in with don't cares. And then it's just a matter of circling appropriately here. So we've got a term here and a term here. So we can say that Q2 star is equal to Q2 not q0 and in as well as the term q1 q0 and not i
And so you can do this for the other two next state values, Q1 star and Q0 star. We also need to do this for the output bits. For the output bits, we've only got three bits because we only have to deal with the states. So in this case, we can look at Z1. So with three inputs, our K map is going to look like this. And so here we're going to fill in 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, and we don't care about the bits from S6 and S7. And so here we can circle this term here. And so we can say that Z1 is equal to Q2 and it with Q0. And so you could also do the same thing for Z sub 0. And so you'd now have five equations that look like this. And now the last step would be to create hardware that would represent these equations. So the first thing that we need are some flip-flops to maintain our current state. So we have three state bits, so we're going to need three flip-flops. They're all running off of the same clock, so we can draw this in here. And you might also want to include a reset line for these. In this case, since our initial state is 0, 0, 0, then we're just going to tie a reset signal for each of these to the reset line. And then now we need to go about implementing these equations. So I'm going to make this top flip-flop Q sub 0, the second one Q1, and the bottom one Q sub 2. And so we're going to need to bring all of these signals around to use for our next state logic. And then we're going to start with the most complex equation, or the largest equation for Q0. We've got five inputs here, so we're going to need a five input for this. So we're going to need five terms total. So we're going to draw the AND gates for this. And now we just need to connect up the inputs for each of these. To make this easy, I'm going to make a true and a complemented version of each of the signals. So we have our five AND gates. Now we just need to go about connecting them. For our first term, we need Q2 and not Q0. For our second term, we need Q2 and I. So I'm going to draw I coming in here, and I'm going to have a true and complemented version of that as well. So we need the true version of I in this case. For our third term, we need Q1 and not Q0, as well as not I. So that takes care of our third term. For our fourth term, we need not Q1. We need not Q0, and we need the true version of I. And then for the fifth term, we need Q1, we need Q0, and we need I. And that takes care of the next state for Q0. We now need to do the same thing for Q1 bit. Here we've only got two terms, so this is going to be a little simpler. We just need two AND gates here. For the first one, we need Q1 and not Q0. For the second one, we need not Q2. We need not Q1. And we need Q0. And then finally, we need I. So that takes care of the next state bit for Q1. We need to do the same thing for Q2. So here again, we've got two terms. For the first one, we need Q2. We need not Q0. And we need I. And for the second term, we need Q1, Q0, not I. So that takes care of all of our next state logic. Now we need to do logic for the outputs. We have two outputs. So we're going to look at Z1 first. We need Q2 and Q0 for that. So this will give us 
z sub one. And then for z sub zero, we need two terms. We need q1 and not q0. And while we could take the q not q0 from other line to keep this simple, I'm just going to draw another gate. We also need q2 and not q0. And so that would take care of our logic for z sub 0. And that would complete implementing this state machine.